Close the door, buddy. We're live. Hey guys, welcome everybody. Everybody ready? Well, I'm not can pray for some reason. My computer's slow. My connection is slow. I don't know what's going on. And it's raining here too, so maybe that's affecting my connection. So pray that by the grace of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, the connection stays strong. Ya Alim Sheikha, please, my God, constrain me. Destroy unrighteous anger, my God, Father, Son, Spirit, please constrain me. Bless this connection, my God, Father, Son, Spirit. Bless this connection for your glory, Father, Son, Spirit. Bless this connection. Please, my God, rebuke Satan, my Father. Rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus. Rebuke Satan, Holy Spirit, and shield us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yehovah, Father, Son, and Spirit. Ya Alim Sheikha, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. Please, my Father, fill my lungs and my chest and my throat and my arteries and <clears throat> my voice with the breath of life, with health from your Holy Spirit. Give me the health I need, my Father, to use my health and use my body to glorify Jesus Christ, to offer my body as a living sacrifice. And please, my Father, anoint my mouth to speak clearly, to speak accurately, to speak coherently, without stammering, without confusion. Perfect my ability to recall the scriptures and interpret them correctly for the glory and honor and praise of your Son, the beloved, the Lord Jesus, Yahweh Father, Son and Spirit, in Jesus Almighty name, Yahweh Father, Son and Spirit, Yahweh Father, Son Please, my God, bless this connection. Ya Allah, Yahweh Father, Son Spirit, please, my God, bless this connection, my God. Yahweh Father, Son and Spirit, I don't know. Yahweh Father, Son and Spirit, please, Lord, save us from attacks of Satan. Save us from being distracted. Save us from anger that is sinful. Save us from disappointment, my, my God. Please. <clears throat> Loosen my tongue, Father, and bless your people. In Jesus' name, bless your people. In Jesus' name, to absorb this information, my God. Please, my Father. Please, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. Illuminate us, Father. Illuminate us, Lord Jesus. Illuminate us, Holy Spirit, to plunge the depth of Scripture and to speak accurately and coherently, without error, without stammering, without confusion. Destroy distractions from Satan. Destroy attacks of Satan. Bless the Internet, Father. Lord Jesus, for your glory, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And bring them, Father, Son of God, bring them. Holy Spirit, bring them. Ya Allah, Ya Mshiha, Father, Son of Spirit, please, my God. Grant us patience, self-control, self-restraint, never to shame you, never dishonor you, never disappoint you, my God, but to glorify you, my God. Yahovah, Father, Son of Spirit, and guide this conversation. Please, we need you, Bobby. We need you, Son of God, Lord Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. Bring your people to learn. Bring your people to listen. Bring your people to absorb this information. And take us to a higher level to become more like Jesus Christ in the way we love you, in the way we worship you, in the way we obey you, the way we live for you. To proclaim the truth without shame, without compromise, and not to be crowd pleasers, my God. The Father, Father, Son, Spirit, trusting in you to supply our daily bread. And please, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit, our loved ones who do not know you, heal them to come to know Jesus. And our loved ones who know you, provide for them and sustain them until we meet Jesus. And be with my daughters, Father. Cover them, cover us in the blood of Jesus. Seal them and fill them. Seal us and fill us with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' almighty name. We love you, Bobby. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh, Father, Son of Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh, Father, Son of Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh, Father, Son of Spirit. All right, guys, uh, welcome. <clears throat> Even though I had said yesterday that I was going to go live around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I forgot that I had a show with Al Fadi and I forgot I had something to do. So better earlier than never, right? <clears throat> better earlier than never. So anyway, for some reason, these last two days, my internet connection has been slow and buffering. I don't know why. I hope it's nothing serious and that it will correct itself by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Everyone good? Everyone in the hood? Everyone here? Invite. We had an excellent session. We had a superb session on Al Fadi Sira International. I did a session here on my YouTube channel proving that Islam is Baal worship, the worship of Baal. Islam is the worship of Baal. So do yourself a favor. Go to my YouTube channel, watch that session, rewatch it. And then I just did part one on that same session for Al Fadi. Go and watch that. We're going to upload it to my YouTube channel, and we're going to do part two, God willing, sometime next week. I give you solid, solid proofs from Muslim sources. So they can't say these are revisionist theories. 
like Dan Gibson. I'm quoting Muslim sources. Solid proofs from Muslim sources, recognized, reputable Muslim sources and scholars in Islam, not quote-unquote Islamophobes, as well as biblical and archaeological evidence for the assertion that the Allah of Islam is nothing more or he is nothing other than Baal repackaged, Baal repackaged under another guise, and that Baal worship is Luciferian worship, the worship of Satan. So make sure to watch my session on this channel. Uh, you'll find it, Baal worship. Rewatch it, pass them on to others, and watch the session I just did with Al Fadi, Sir International. Let me get you the link. In fact, Protestant believer, are you here? <clears throat> Is he here? Is my brother here? My brother from a different mother. He's the one who helps me post verses for you. Bro, can you get the link to the session I did earlier? He's the one that blesses us by uploading these videos. God bless him. He doesn't get paid for it. His reward is with the Lord Jesus Christ. So Protestant, if you can share that link from al Fadi, which I just did less than an hour ago. It was a lot of meat. A lot of meat. Yahweh will follow my spirit, right? So he'll share that link, and I'll give you the articles that went with that discussion. Here are the articles. Here it is. Here's the article that I referenced. The religion of Islam, the reemergence of Baal worship, Baal worship. Here it is. Here's the article that I referenced for that session and the session I did for my own channel. Here it is. Save these links. Again, I'm going to repeat, you have my full authorization. Upload these articles, these sessions to your YouTube channels, to your sites. Make clips of them and translate them. Absorb the information. Learn the information. Perfect the understanding of the information. And then share this information all over the world so that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is magnified and Muhammad is exposed for the glory of Jesus Christ. So that's one article. And then I reference another article. Man, see, I'm getting old. I'm 48 years old and I'm forgetting. It was this. Man, what other article did I reference? Oh, yeah. I also referenced this article. I'm sorry. See, I'm getting old, folks. Pray the Lord Jesus perfects my ability to recall the scriptures and the facts of scriptures and perfect my love for him, my trust in him, my faith in him, that that will get stronger. Everything else goes, but those things remain for his glory in Jesus' name. Okay, here it is. Let me get it for you. Deuteron Deutero, Deuteronomy. All right, 13. Here it is. This was the other article. What happened here? Am I misspelling it? Yeah, because I can't spell. Deutero, Deuteronomy. Why can't I spell the word anymore? So yeah, you see, my brain is so fi fired, uh, fried. Deuteronomy. Guys, I'm getting... Uh, my brain is fried. How do you spell Deuteronomy? You know, I forgot how to spell Deuteronomy. How do you spell? <laughs> I'm getting old, dude. Deuteronomy. Yeah, I did spell it right. Why didn't it show up? My goodness, what's going on? Please, my God, guide this conversation. Yeah, I don't see follow this in my spirit. Yep, it's not working. Something's wrong. That's why. It's not, I was misspelling Deuteronomy. I put in the wrong word. Okay, you guys got the first article, right? Here's the second article. The reason why I was spelling it right, it's just because I put in the wrong word, Baal. It was supposed to be Belial. Here it is. This is the other article. I just shared the links to the two articles I referenced in the session with Al Fadi. Lord willing, we'll put in the description box. So save those articles. Now, I also uploaded, I found <clears throat> Jamal, Jamal Badawi's brochure, Jesus in the Quran and the Bible, on another website. But again, for the sake of perpetuity, I uploaded his pamphlet on my blog because we're going to go through this pamphlet systematically, dec decimating it, annihilating it by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, exposing Jamal Badawi as, a, a, as another, exposing Jamal Badawi as another fraud and charlatan and tool of the devil. Father, I beg you, take over this session. Lord Jesus, anoint my mouth. Cover us and wash us in your holy blood and shield us and our loved ones. Shield my angels by the power of the blood of your cross, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, save me from stammering and confusion and bless your people, illuminate them. In Jesus' name, Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. We got to keep praying. We got to be prayed up, filled with the Spirit. This is warfare, folks. So here, I took his pamphlet and now I put it on my blog for perpetuity because we're going to go through this pamphlet and decimate it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, there's the article. 
If you don't know why Jamal Badawi is important, you need to know why. Now, he's not as boring or hideous as David Wood. Now, don't tell David Wood I'm saying this about him. He's not as boring or as hideous as David Wood. The difference is at least David Wood is a true Christian. He's born of the Spirit. He belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's a brother that we have to put up with and endure and carrying him and overlook how hideously ugly he is and see his inner beauty. And even that's hard to find. I mean, that's very difficult. Looking at him, he's hideously ugly, so we have to endure. But then trying to find inner beauty, wow, that's a miracle too. But we endure for the sake of the Lord Jesus because he is a professing Christian and is used of God to destroy Islam. But with Jamal Badawi, the reason why he's important, let me tell you why Jamal Badawi is important. Jamal Badawi is Shabir Ali's mentor. Shabir Ali, hey, hater, yesterday we had about 350. So, okay, stop hating. And today on Al Fadi, we had about 350. Right. If I was doing it for 11 years where I beg people to give me attention and support me, I'd have 100,000 <clears> subscribers already. But I'm not like you. If someone as ugly as you can get half a million subscribers. Then there's hope for the rest of us. May the Lord Jesus increase in us. May we decrease and may he be glorified. Now, let me tell you why. Guys, let me tell you why. Jamal Badawi is important. Are you ready? Jamal Badawi. Is Shabir Ali's mentor. He is Shabir Ali's Muslim teacher. He taught Shabir Ali the basics of Islam. And another reason why Jamal Badawi is important is because you may have not heard of him. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, he was one of the biggest names in Christian Muslim scholarly circles. The most popular figure was Ahmad Didad. But Ahmad Didad did not have the influence of Jamal Badawi. Jamal Badawi was actually considered a respectable scholar by Christian scholars, theologians, and apologists. So everyone's eyes are on Ahmad Didat. Little do they realize Didat wasn't as influential when it came to Christian-Muslim relationships. It was Jamal Badawi. Badawi was invited by scholars on panel discussions, debating legitimate Christian scholars. And sadly, the Christian scholars did terrible. They did badly. And he pulverized them. And I'm talking about if you've been in the field, if you've been in the field in Christian-Muslim dialogue and mission work to Muslims, the names I'm telling you, the na names I'm telling you are names known in this circle, in this circle. Dr. Dudley Woodbury, right? Warren Chastain. <clears throat> Gleason Archer, Robert Douglas, to name a few, and he's debated them all. He's also debated William Lane Craig. And sadly, in the debates, Jamal Badawi overwhelmed them. Sadly. He is so influential that John Ankerberg, if you guys don't know, if you don't know, I'm dating myself, one of the most watched television shows that used to come on every Saturday or every week, sometimes Saturday was the John Ankerberg show. John Ankerberg used to host some of the greatest Christian apologists and invite them to address issues and debate people. In fact, John Ankerberg is also famous for featuring Walter Martin, the late, great Dr. Walter Martin. Dr. Walter Martin and John Ankerberg worked together until Walter Martin was taken home by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, John Ankerberg, we're going to be looking at the clip. We're going to be looking at the clip. Invited Jamal Badawi and someone from my former neck of the woods, Chicago, Dr. Hussein Morsi, to debate Dr. Gleason Archer and Anish Sharosh. Gleason Archer, as I mentioned yesterday, spoke, not spoke. Let me correct myself. Holy Spirit, save me from error for the glory of Jesus. He read and wrote 25 languages. He was a renowned scholar of the Old Testament and the archaeology of the Old Testament. He's since been taken home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the debates with Gleason Archer, both on Ankerberg and other platforms, Badawi overwhelmed Gleason Archer and Anish Rosh. But as I said yesterday, not because of facts. The facts are on our side. The truth is on our side because of lies, deceit, emotional manipulation, and rhetoric. Badawi makes Shabrali look honest. That's how wickedly dishonest but we is. So are we ready now? Are we ready to now look into some of the clips 
and then go through his debate with Anisha Rosh on the divinity of Christ, Jesus, divinity of Jesus, divinity of Christ, Muslim Christian perspective. So here's the pamphlet. This is the pamphlet he was using. Lord willing, we're going to go through this pamphlet, go through his arguments, decimate them by the power of the triune God. So again, let me remind you, when the dust is settled, Dr. Anisha Rosh, Dr. Gleason Archer, the late doctor, well, they're all, they're all passed on. They're in glory with Jesus Christ. I believe they're alive with Jesus because they were saved, born of the Spirit. Robert Morey, John Gilchrist, who's still alive, right? <clears throat> Warren Chastain, Robert Douglas, who I believe is still alive. I haven't heard. He's still with us, right? <clears throat> All of these men stand vindicated. Their arguments are vindicated. Their arguments were solid, factual, truthful, because they served and worshipped the God of truth. And Badawi and Izilk exposed as wicked, satanic agents and liars like their father, the devil. Glory to the Chime God that I went through those debates, allowed myself, and it was the Holy Spirit guiding me to be overwhelmed, to be devastated, disappointed, depressed, so that the Holy Spirit would take that and mold me and others in the field today, taking us to a higher level of apologetics and theology to decimate these liars and their lies and their father, the devil, by the power of the Word of God, the Holy Bible, and the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm buffering, guys. That's beyond my control. Is everything good? Uh, Ronaldo, do you want me to block you? What's What does what I have to drink today got to do with the topic? Okay. It's buffering on my end. Is it okay on you guys? Pray, guys. For some reason, it's acting up. Please, my God, for your glory. You don't need me. We need you. All right. Here's the pamphlet. I gave you the link. Yeah, my end is buffering. I don't know. I can't do anything about it. If it gets bad, I'm going to have to shut down. All right. Here it goes. That's the link to the pamphlet. Now let's go into the clips. Let's go into the clips. Let's go into the clips. Pray that it stays good. I don't have to shut down. That would be very disappointing. Okay, let's go into the clips. Yeah, I am Sheikha. Oh my goodness. Oh, my spirit. Please, Lord. Save me from my own unrighteous anger. All right. There you go. Let's go here. Okay, let's go into the history. Let's get the clips. Let me just get ready. All right. Let me just get ready. Bear with me. Here it is. Save these links. These are the links to Jamal Badawi's debates with Anisha Rosh, Gleason Archer, and William Lane Craig. Clip number one. Save this link, guys. Save the link. I'm going to post it twice. This is in his debate with William Lane Craig. You're going to hear from the horse's mouth. Ya alayam shikha means... O oh God, O oh Christ, it's an invocation to our God, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father is Christ. It's an invocation. Ya Alaha, Ya Alaha, Yem Shicha. O oh God, O oh Christ, it's an invocation of prayer. Okay, you guys got that link, right? Okay, now let's listen. Remember yesterday, I need you now to be attentive. Help me to help you guys. Help me to help you. Pray we get about 400 to learn this meat. We're going to go into meat. You're going to be blessed because in this session, you're going to learn how to interpret Scripture, how not to interpret Scripture, how to defend Scripture by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our success is by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to learn the depth of Scripture, the meat of Scripture, and be blown away how irrefutably clear the Bible is that the true God who lives and loves us, who's in love with us, and may we be in love with him, is triune, and Jesus is the God-man, and how to destroy Islam and Muhammad's lies. You're going to get a lot of meat and you're going to kill a lot of stone uh, birds with the stone of scripture, the rock of scripture, the immovable <clears throat> almighty rock who is the father and his son and the Holy Spirit, the triumph God and their word, the Holy Bible, the voice of the triumph God, the voice of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So that was clip number one. Now, what you're going to hear from Jamal Badawi, if you remember yesterday's session, make sure to re-listen to that session. Re-listen to that session. Jamal Badawi is now going to articulate Islamic Unitarianism. Pay attention now. He's going to articulate Islamic Unitarianism. He's going to tell you that Islamic Unitarianism 
has three subsets, threefold classification of Islamic Unitarianism known as Tawheed. He's going to break it down. Remember, I mentioned it yesterday. Let me repeat. Among Sunni Muslims, specifically Salafi Muslims, other Sunni Muslims like the Ashari Maturidi, they do not like to classify Tawheed into three categories. But this is found among the Salafi Muslims. So obviously, obviously, Jamal Barwi has been influenced by Salafi Muslims. Okay? And according to Salafi Islam, Tawheed is broken down into three categories. There are three subsets. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Rububiyyah, Allah is the sole Lord of all creation. And you're going to hear him articulated. I'm going to play two clips. Listen to the man, because we're going to use his words to bury his religion and condemn his wicked false prophet Muhammad for the glory of Jesus. The second category is Tawheed Uluhiya, Uluhiya, also Tawheed and Ibadah. Allah alone is to be worshipped. Uluhiya, Ibadah means the worship, the service given to Allah alone. That's the second category, second subset. Yeah, hit the like button. The third category is Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat. There are certain characteristics and names that belong to Allah alone and cannot be given to any creature or that would be blasphemy. Now let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Are we ready now? Jamal Badawi subscribes to this threefold classification of Tawheed from his own lectures and debates. Are we ready? In his debate with William Lane Craig. Begin first by spending a few minutes by defining what Muslim mean by monotheism because the same claim is also made uh, you can hear by, uh, Christians. <laughs> for the Muslim, there are at least three important conditions for pure monotheism. Three. One is to believe that God is the sole creator, sustainer of the universe, no partner and no co-creator with him. Secondly, <coughs> excuse me, that God alone is worthy of worship which means none is to be worshipped instead of him, alongside with him, nor is God to worship through any of his creatures. No confession, no clergy with a specific uh, authority. Thirdly, that God is not only one numerically, but one also in attributes and person, which means there is only one person. There are no persons in uh, Godhead. For the Muslim, any departure from any of these three elements is regarded as so-called shirk, which is not only polytheism, actually it means in a broad sense to associate others with God in his exclusive divine attributes. The Quran presents that as the cardinal yes, sin that will never be forgiven. It quotes Jesus, the blessed himself, as saying that you would be innocent of those who do the same. Did you hear what he just said? Because we're play another clip. If you associate anyone with Allah and his divine attributes, and that's a deviation, you're committing shirk, the sin of association. That's what this deceiver, this liar did yesterday when he said all prophets are the way, the truth, and the life. He now associated creatures with Allah and Allah's exclusive divine attributes and characteristics. So this wicked deceiver, this tool of the devil, May the Lord Jesus expose him for his glory and protect us. Just did what he claimed is the unforgivable sin of Islam. Did you hear it? You heard it, right? Now let's play a clip from another debate. A clip from another debate. That was with William Lane Craig. Aren't you thankful to the triumph God who lives, the Lord Jesus who's alive and he's real, who loves us, and may we be in love with him for preserving his perfect word, the Bible, his voice to us. That we live in a time with this wonderful technology. All you do is pay for internet and you get all this information accessible to be used by the power of the Holy Spirit to destroy the lies of Satan and his children for the glory of Jesus. We are so blessed and privileged to have such ample proofs that our God is real. The Bible is his word preserved and he has made it so easy to destroy the lies and blasphemies for his glory if we're willing to yield to the spirit and he's worthy that we do so. Okay, now. Let's now go to the other clip. That was clip number one. Now let's go to the other clip. You know what? Isn't it sad? I had the clip up and I can't find it. Oh, the <sighs> 
All right, sorry guys. I had it up and now I can't. Why is this happening to me? Lord Jesus, have mercy. Save us from Satan, please, my God. Here it goes. That's why I just had to refresh you, little haters. Okay, here's what this debate. This? Here's this debate with Anisha Roche, Dr. Gleason Archer, on the John Akerberg show. This was in the 90s. You guys can watch these debates in their entirety, and I highly encourage you to do so. Here's the link. You guys got the link? Let's listen. Opening statements, five minutes, he makes a case for the Islamic concept of God. Listen to what he says. Three common beliefs are very essential to the Muslim, however. Oneness of God means more than believing in the one creator of the universe. There are three additional conditions. Did you hear it? Oneness of God is not sufficient. There are three. Notice the threefold classification of Islamic Unitarianism. He mentioned it again. Threefold classification. Three criteria. Listen to them. First, God is one in essence and in person. This excludes the presence of equal divine persons in the same Godhead. Neither tritheism nor trinity, however explained, is compatible with the pure Islamic monotheism. Two, God alone is worthy of worship and unqualified devotion. None is to be worshipped instead of him or alongside with him as co-equal, nor is God to be worshipped through any creature, whether religious institution, clergy, or even the greatest of the prophets. The third condition in Islam for monotheism is that any shortcoming, man-like weaknesses and limitation is not befitting to the glory of God. This excludes any notion of God incarnate and any other quality or action which is ungodly, ungodlike, or unsuitable for the majesty of God. <clears throat> to the Muslim, any deviation from any of these conditions is called in Arabic shirk, means to associate or join others with God in his exclusive divine attributes. Divine attributes. It is it again? In his exclusive divine attributes. He just gave you the threefold classification in his own way of articulating them. He's basically articulating Tawheed al rububiya Rububiyyah, Tawheed al uluhiya Ibadah, Tawheed al asma wa Safat. He's articulating it in his own way without using the Arabic terms because his audience predominantly are non-Muslims. But that's what he just said. And if you associate anyone in Allah's exclusive divine attributes, you're committing shirk, the unforgivable sin. Listen attentively. Regarded as a serious compromise of pure and long-standing monotheism taught by all prophets. In fact, Muslims believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent by God to restore and clarify the same pure concept of monotheism that was taught by all of the prophets. Okay, you got it. Now you can listen to the full debates on your own. Now I'm going to give you... One link on the names of Allah, because I'm going to show you that the very names that Islamic theology ascribes to Allah and characteristics are some of the very names and characteristics that Jesus attributes attributes to himself, ascribes to his own person. Okay? So, and, and then I'm going to play something by Zachar Nayak. Zachar Nayak, the brother fit, the brother fit. <laughs> hold on. Let's get it, hold on. Before I play the Zachar Nayak, let me get you now. That list. Aisha Buley, Muslim, a convert to Islam, has an excellent <clears throat> section on her website chronicling the divine names and attributes. And if you study the divine names and attributes, you can just use this very material to show that Jesus claimed to be God Almighty in the flesh. And I'll give you examples. Guys, you're getting seminary stuff. You're getting stuff they don't even teach in seminary. Be thankful appreciative and praise the Lord Jesus and show him your appreciation by loving him more, living more faithfully, obeying him more perfectly and glorifying his name, preaching his name without compromise, without shame, speaking against all evil. Even if that means we end up in jail and killed by the powers of the Holy Spirit. He is worthy. Okay, here you go. The divine names and pray for us in the battle lines that we remain worthy of our Lord Jesus, even unto death. Here you go. Here's the link. 
Click on that link. This is from Aisha Buley. The names and attributes of Allah. Names and attributes that cannot be given to a creature. Cannot be given to a creature. I will show you some of the names and how those very names prove Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh. You ready for that? Are you ready for me? This is a brand new series. I'll, I'll be doing this series on history of Muslim Christian debates until the Lord comes or takes me home. Whatever comes first. Okay, but now you got that link. Here it is. Let's hear Zachariah commenting on. I want you to listen. Zachariah has asked the question in regards to Anish Arosh's debate with Ahmad Didad. The late Anish Arosh debated Ahmad Didad. They had two debates in London. One is, is Jesus God? The other is the Quran or Bible, which is the Word of God. You can watch them online. You guys are so spoiled, I'm jealous of you. Guys, in the 90s, we had to buy this stuff. Only the Lord knows how many thousands of dollars we've spent over the years for this material. And you all now have it for free. You all have it for free. I'm jealous of you. In fact, do you want me to give you links to two books that are online for free that I had to buy and which is now hard to find related to Christ and Islam and the biography of Muhammad? Do you guys want the link to the PDF file? of Ibn Ishaq's biography of Muhammad, translated by Alfred Guillaume, which we had to buy in the 90s and cost us over 60 bucks, which is now available online as a PDF file. Talk about you guys being spoiled. I just found it today. Do you know why? Let me tell you why I was looking for it. And again, I'm not trying to have a pity party. All of my books, booklets, pamphlets, are in boxes in Chicago. Many of them are in storage and I don't have access to, thanks to my ex-wife. May God have mercy on her. I don't want to be talking about her. May the Lord deal with it. And other books are locked up in a Christian storefront because I had no room for them and I couldn't sh ship them with me to where I'm at. I don't have room for them. I do not have access to this information. So what do I do? I try to go online to see if I can find them online. And glory to God, someone was kind enough to upload these books as PDF files. Books that I can't hold in my hands. Books that I've left notations in for future reference. I don't have access to them. Pray that if God's will be done, somehow I'll get access to those books or at least do something with them. Right? Maybe sell them and use the money for ministry, whatever. But anyway, two books in my library I found online that I don't have access to. George Perinder's book, Jesus in the Quran. George Perinder's book, Jesus in the Quran. I found it. Here it is. He's a scholar of Islam and wrote a book on what the Quran, Islamic tradition, says about Jesus. Here it is as a PDF file free of charge. Now, Protestant, do me a favor, brother. Keep track of the link so we can put them in the description box later. There you go. Link number one. Free book that we had to pay for. Now, let me get you Alfred Guillaume. Alfred Guillaume. The translation of Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, which contains... The Satanic Verses. This is the book we have and we use. This is the official English translation. Here it is, folks. Here it is. Free of charge. Downloaded as a PDF file. Here it is. Talk about you guys being spoiled. Here you go. Okay. Are you not now more appreciative of the blessings, the graces, the time God has given you by allowing you to be born at this time. Advances in medicine, making even diseases that the Lord may use to take us into glory, where we'll be cancer-free and pain-free and deathless. Making those diseases easier to handle, right? And the amount of food that you can eat, right? You can even order online and all these tools, you, we are the most spoiled generation thus far. And all these blessings we're going to have to give an answer to. So we better be ready and we better love Jesus more and say, thank you, thank you. Even if you didn't give me a single thing because of who you are, being God, that alone makes you worthy that I worship you and love you and die for you. How much more now that you give me all these provisions I don't deserve? So there you go, folks. Here it is. The English translation of Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, free of charge. There it goes. Right there. And if you scroll down, you can download it as a PDF file. Scroll down. Let me get it for you. Scroll down. You're going to see it says download options. You can download it as an Abbey GZ, 
a Daisy, an EPUB, full text item tile, Kindle, PDF. I download as a PDF, single page, JP2 zip. It's right there. Let me get you the PDF because I, I only download this PDF. Here is the link for the PDF version. Boy, are you spoiled. Thank Jesus. Now, pray God will bless me to empower me to be holy and love with Jesus and worship Jesus and obey Jesus and ask the Lord for the grace to make my channel articles explode for his glory, not for the praise of men, and to sustain me and my daughters. There you go, guys. There you go. You guys, boy, are you spoiled. Now, with those blessings that the Lord has given us, now let's listen to this short clip by Zachary Naik. I'm going to play it in its entirety. Because Anish Shirosh debated Ahmad Didat. And again, sadly, Shirosh didn't do as good of a job refuting Ahmad Didat. Right? So then what happened is they brought in the big gun. Guess who they brought in? The Muslims weren't too pleased with, Shiro uh, with Ahmad Didat. They didn't think he lost, but they didn't think he, he won. So guess what they did? They invited Anish Shirosh to debate Jamal Badawi in Lawrence, Kansas. Now, Badawi wasn't as well known as Anish as Ahmad Didat. Badawi wasn't as well known as Ahmad Didat, but he's much more knowledgeable than Ahmad Didat. Much more knowledgeable than Ahmad Didat. So they set up Shirosh because Shirosh didn't know who he was. And when he went, Badawi wiped the floor with him. Not because Badawi was speaking truth. Remember what I said. Glory to the Triune God, Anish Sharosh, Robert Morey, Gleason Archer, Robert Douglas, John Gilchrist. All of them stand vindicated. William Campbell, all of them stand vindicated. Their arguments are vindicated, being absolutely true and factual. They won by lies, by trickery, by deceit, by hook and crook, <clears throat> by, tr by trickery, because they are of their father, the devil, by emotional manipulation and rhetoric. But glory to God that he allowed us to watch that because now those debates made us what we are today. The fear and horror and dread of Muslims and their fake God and their fake prophet by the power of the true God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. At that time, I didn't know why I was watching these things because they were depressing me, discouraging me. But God took what Satan intended for evil and used it for good because I wouldn't be what I am without these debates. Now, Let's listen to Zachary Naik, what he says about Shirosh's debate with Jamal Badawi. Listen, very important to put things in historical perspective. Why these sessions are important. You're going to learn a lot by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father's heart. Here it is. Let's listen. Let me get it for you. Hold on. Alrighty then. Let's go there. And then we're going to continue. Here's the link. You can listen to it. We're going to play it. It's a short clip. Okay, you guys ready to listen and learn? You ready? Yeah, exactly. Payback time, Dr. J. Same thought he was getting the upper hand. His children were rejoicing at our expense, at our shame and humiliation. But what did Jesus say? He who endures to the end shall be saved. If you remain faithful to Jesus till the end, you'll be saved, you'll be vindicated, and your enemies will be brought beneath your feet because King Jesus lives and he's almighty. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, now let's read. Let's watch. And it's just going to get better for us because our Lord lives. Muhammad is dead and buried in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, Rahim, the notable chief of Minister of Tamangali. Can you hear him? This is as loud as he gets. Zakir, the VIPs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Zahar from. Uh, it's law on their end. It was a long queue. I forgot my questions already. Okay. I'll tell you what he's asking because Zechariah Knight comes in more clearly. He's asking about Didat losing to Nishirosh. He goes, Christians tell me Shirosh won. Muslims tell me Didat won. Anyway, since you have mentioned a few times about Bibles and Quran, as well as you mentioned about Sheikh Ahmad Didat, Sheikh Ahmad Didat. which I know that Sheikh Ahmad Didat is your Sifu, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, I See what he said? He goes, I know Sheikh Ahmad Didat is your Sifu, your teacher, Zakir Naik. So now listen. I have read a few times where Sheikh Ahmad Didat had debate with Anish Shoraj from Palestine a few times. And the last time was in Albert Hall of England. 
and the debate was about the Bible and the Quran, which is the words of Allah. Did you hear what he said? I've been told that Didat and Shiroch had a debate in Royal Albert Hall in England. Quran or Bible, Bible Quran, which is the words of Allah? That's what I've been told. Now listen. Let me know if the sound is good enough where you can hear him. Oh, God. And uh, I'm so sorry if, if I, this is very sensitive, actually. Christians claims that any Shiroch had won the debate. But at the same time, won the debate. But at the same time, the Muslim supporters claim that Ahmad Didat had won the debate. So the Christians say Shirosh won the debate. Muslims say Didat won the debate. So he's going to ask Zekar Naik for his opinion. Now, could you please give a clear clarification of who really won the debate and what are the salient points that says that Quran is the words of God? Thank you. Okay, you got his question? I was asked a question that... Sheikh Ahmed Dida, the person who inspired me, debated with Dr. Anis Sorosh many times and last time in Royal Albert Hall. Not last time, the first time Royal Albert Can Hall. Can you hear him? The topic, what is, is this God? The second time was Quran or the Bible, which is God, what is Birmingham, NEC Stadium, NEC National, National Exhibition Center. And the Christians say that Anis Sorosh won, the Muslims say that Sheikh Dida won. What is right? You see the, sorry? Now, these are the things that the supporters of the Christian supporters are claiming that they have won the debate. But when it's we go through all this, the Muslim claim that they won. So now we are in, we don't know who really won. Who really won? The same point if, you, that, if, you, yeah. if you hear the debate yeah. of Listen. Sheikh Didat and Dr. Anish Sorosh, we find that what Anish Sorosh did was he was speaking at 1000 miles per hour. He was reading from his book, which he wrote. And when you speak at 1,000 miles per hour, some things you don't understand. And even I heard the debate, I didn't understand what he said. So if you don't understand what he said, how can I reply? Here it is, I could say, please, sister, repeat. And this is the guy whose accent and lisp is so bad, and he has the audacity to say he couldn't understand something else. The brother said, the sister said, the sister said, the sister the audacity of this clown to talk about someone's accent and inability to understand. Is this not the pot calling the kettle black? And is this not someone's beam sticking out where he's so blinded that he sees the splinter in someone else's eyes, but not the beams in his eyes? I, even, I don't understand what he said. What a stinking, wicked, filthy hypocrite. That you could not say. Correct? So when she, when Ani Suraj was reading at 100 miles per hour, you could see the audience getting irritated. He was looking down. He was speaking to himself, not to the audience. And debating is even my expertise, alhamdulillah. I'm supposed to be a student of Sheikh Dida. And when I saw the debate, he was breaking all the rules of debate. He was reading to himself as though the audience did exist. And the audience was booing him. But naturally, if you want to look and talk like that, like that, like that, no, no, no. Well, the audience come here. So, if you want to read 1000 miles per hour, so whatever she did, that understood, he replied. And he hammered him. Lock, stock, and barrel. What he didn't understand, how can he reply? And he hammered him. Lock, stock, and barrel. The Brahil prior. He hammered him. But now notice what he's going to say about Shiroshi and Jamal Badawi. Correct. That's the reason he had a second day. He challenged any Christian missionary to come and no one came. So he replied to some parts which you could not understand. Now when you replay, you can understand. So Sheikh Dida heard again and replied to more points the next day. If you see the sequel to his debate, he has replied to many points which he didn't understand the first day. And the best answer is, if you see the debate of Dr. Anis Sorosh with Dr. Jamal Badwi. Did you hear what he said? The best answer is to see the debate with Anis Sorosh and Dr. Jamal Badawi. He just mentioned the debate that I watched, I listened to on Arika said that disappointed me, depressed me. Listen to what he's going to say about that debate. Jamal Badawi and Ishirosh that took place after Shirosh debated Didat. Listen to what he's going to say. Here, Sheikh Didat was having a handicap. He could not understand 1,000 miles per hour speed. You understand? Yeah. And Anish Shirosh did not reply to Didat, even though Didat spoke very clearly. So as a person, 
when you can realize that Didar spoke so clearly and Anish Rao did not reply, that means Anish Rao didn't have answers. Didar, I do agree with you, did not answer to all his allegations because his allegations were 1,000 miles per hour. It was so fast, they could not be understood. Party answered next day in the sequel. But if you see the debate between Anish Sarosh and Jamal Badwi, now because his book was released, now you can read the book. So after a few months, when Anish Sarosh debated with Jamal Badwi, Jamal Badwi took Anish Sarosh lock, stock and barrel. Though he spoke at 100 miles per hour, Jamal Badwi could read the book. And he was prepared. Before the debate with Sheikh Dida, the book wasn't released. So Anish Sarosh answered each and every point, point by point, and really flattened him. Amen. Sheikh Dida, mashallah, did a wonderful job. Even though he could not understand many things, he answered. And that's the reason most the Muslims believe that he won the debate. And the Christians, they are supporting the battle, the falsehood. Really, such a Christian tells you, tell him, here the sequel of Sheikh Didad, you get more answers. Here the debate to Dr. Jamal Badi, you get all the answers. See? And so, but natural, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, Allah says, When truth is hurled in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood, it's parts which are bound to perish. Hope that answers the question. And I thank the audience for the patient listening. Okay, did you catch it now? See what he said? You see the problem with these debates? Because the Muslims gave the impression that they pulverized the Christians and decimated the arguments, the Muslim world thinks Islam is unassailable, it's irrefutable, and the Christians are desperate, and Allah is exposing them as clowns. See, that's why I got disappointed. I know I have the truth. I knew that. Even when I watched those debates, I knew I had the true God, and I was studying his true word, the Holy Bible, and the true God is triune, and Jesus is the God-man. I knew that. But why I got depressed and angry was because every time a Christian loses and someone that's considered a bona fide Christian representative, the Muslims think, see, Allah is humiliating Christianity, exposing the Bible and the Trinity as falsehood and honoring his messenger, Muhammad, and showing the Quran is true. And so they walk mm -hmm. up with their heads high, full of pride. And now we have to take them down. Now we have to knock them off their horse destroy their pride and arrogance, bury Muhammad in the hell that he, he belongs to and that he's currently in, Hades, and show Allah is a demon whom the Lord Jesus has crushed and trampled under his feet. Now we need to lift up the, the heads of the Christians, the true servants of the true God, the children of the living God, the brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ, born of the Holy Spirit. It's time to wipe out Islam, and we will by the power of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here to do. With your prayers... Your support, your love, your evangelism, and learning the material. So now let's go into decimating these arguments. Now I hope that put a fire in your heart. Now can you imagine, this is in the 90s, you didn't have YouTube, you didn't have the plethora of sources that you have now, and you have to now listen to these debates, watch these debates, and then go look for the answers. Imagine you're in my situation or David Wood's situation or others, but you see how faithful God is? how glorious God is, how alive the God of the Bible is, how real Jesus is, that in spite of that, he brought us through this wilderness and now into a position where none of their arguments can be defended and all their blasphemies are being destroyed in silence by the grace of the true God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God and destroyer. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Son of God. We love you. We worship you. Make us bold as lions to live for you and die for you and never betray you in Jesus' name. So now, let's continue. Let's continue rebutting, rebutting Jamal Badawi in his debate with Anish Rosh. And now you see why these discussions are important, right? These are the historical debates that molded, shaped, formed, and fashioned Christian-Muslim dialogue. If you guys want to know the history of Christian Muslim debate, you got to go back and watch all of these videos on YouTube. They're not videos anymore, but here it is. Now let's begin. Are we ready? We ready to begin? Exactly. It will be the lid, Labelle. And then it will be the lid on the coffin of Islam if we Christians who truly love Jesus Christ and know him do our part, submitting to the spirit, 
learning our Bible, living it out with the power of the Spirit, worshiping our God, learning how to destroy these false satanic ideologies. Now let's begin. Thank Protestant Believer for helping me to help you. May the Lord Jesus bless the internet connection. Let's start. Said I and the Father are one. But what does oneness really mean? Does it mean oneness in essence? If that is the case, how do we explain the fact that Jesus also addressed his disciples and he said that you are one with me or so that you be one in me? Now, if it is oneness Listen. in essence and Jesus and the Father are one, which means that Jesus is divine like the Father, and then Jesus said to the disciple, I am you and one, then all the disciples are also divine and that included Judas at that time, the one who betrayed him. Obviously, nobody can have that an impossible type of interpretation. Okay. Are you guys ready to destroy this guy's lies and blasphemies and expose him and shame him and his prophet for the glory of Jesus Christ? You guys ready now? You see his argument. He's now addressing arguments that Christians use to prove Jesus is God. He says that it is said that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. April 1st, you want me to get you out of here? If you think that's a good point, then you're stupider than I thought. You're a world-class idiot and a moron. And you disgust me for thinking it's a good argument. It shows that you're biblically illiterate. And I'm, I'm thinking I need to get rid of you because just your name upsets me because you're mocking. April 1st is April Fool's Day. It's your birthday and your mother's birthday. So you need to get out of here. Get this guy out of here. It's punk. Anyway, let's focus. All right? Let's focus for the glory of Jesus Christ. All right. You see, he says, when someone says, I and the Father are one, well, in John 17, 11, Jesus says the disciples are one as the Father and the Son are one, right? So if that means that the Father and Son are one in essence, so then the disciples are also God. They're one in essence and include Judas, right? Because Judas was there, right? That's his argument. You heard it, right? That was his argument. See, if one here means one in essence, then the disciples are one as the Father and the Son are one, and that includes Judas, so Judas is God as well. Now, let me show you why this guy is such a wicked deceiver. He makes even Shibrali look honest. Why I despise him the most. I dislike him the most, right? Because he pretends to be a nice guy, a minister of righteousness, just like Satan appears as an angel of light. Let's go to John 17, 11 to 12. John 17, 11 to 12. Here you're going to learn that you need to know your Bible. Here you're going to learn that you need to know your Bible. They're misquoting your Bible. Your Bible is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. And the Bible is the inspired written Word of God. It's your sword given to you to use in spiritual battle to overcome and conquer for the glory of Jesus. But your enemies are using your weapon against you. Now let's read. John 17, 11 to 12. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name. Those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are. They may be one as we are. See, that's what he's referring. May th they may be one as we are. And he said, Judas, right? Notice what he did not do. He didn't, he didn't read the next verse. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Judas wasn't there when Jesus prayed this prayer. Judas had already left to bring the soldiers in order to arrest Jesus in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now here, Jesus is praying in the upper room. After the prayer, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas shows up with the soldiers. Why would he say that this includes Judas when the very next verse shows that Jesus is not including Judas and in the unity among believers? Why would he say that? Did you guys got it? The very next verse after Jesus said, may they be one as we are one, shows that Judas is not one of those that will be one with fellow believers because he's a son of perdition who betrayed the Lord Jesus and now is handed over to destruction. Why would he mention Judas? Do you understand why? Shock value. This is what his father, the devil, does. Shock you. Emotional manipulation because it's going to make you say, oh, wow. Yeah, man, that can't be one in essence because Judas is included and no one would ever think that Judas is one in essence. You see the emotional manipulation? Do you see the deceit, the trickery to shock Christians and make Muslims laugh at Christians? Because the Muslims are listening and laughing, saying, look at these Christians, what jokes they are, they're clowns. And Christians are listening to this, oh man, disciples are one too? And Judas is included? I better not use that verse anymore. You see? See it for what it is. 
satanic, diabolical, emotional manipulation and rhetoric aimed to blaspheme the Lord Jesus, destroy the faith of Christians, and make Muslims laugh at Christianity. This is from the pit of hell. Okay? Did you get that? Okay. Now, let's reread John 17 11. Let's reread John 17 11. The attentive reader will see. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Number one, he doesn't say, may they be one with us. We are one with them. They are one with us. He doesn't even say that. Reread it carefully. Guys, you need to be attentive readers. Not just read, but understand what you read, and then live it out for the glory of Christ. He didn't say, may we be one with them, and they be one with us, as I am one with you. He says... May they be one as we are one, meaning may they attain a level of fellowship, communion, and love that emulates, imitates, mimics our perfect, inseparable love, communion, and fellowship. Libel, you need to get out of here, Libel. Bye-bye, sister. Libel, get, get this person out of here. Bye-bye. Take care. Don't come back. All right, everyone there? You got it now? Everyone got that? You understand? He's saying, may they attain a unity, a love for one another, a fellowship, a dependence, and communion that mimics, reflects, emulates our perfect, inseparable communion, fellowship, and love for one another. Okay? So that's first of all. I just want you to get that. I want you to get that. Now, I'm going to explain what John 10, 30 means in context, but I'm going to let him finish his point. I'm going to let him finish his point. He goes on a lengthy rant, but I want you to hear it so I can then decimate his argument for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay? But when it's here, if you read it in the context of John, that nobody can pluck. I know my, my people. Nobody can pluck them of my hand because I and the Father are one. We are one in purpose. We are one in spirituality. And that term is not very strange to Muslims. In one of the Qudsi hadith... It's ironic. He reads the passage that destroys his argument and blasphemy, but he's so blind by Satan, Muhammad's father, he doesn't see it. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now he's going to try to liken it to what Allah says. Is that Muslim side, it says that uh, Allah speaks and says, or at least communicates or narrates through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Guys, real quickly, can I ask you a question? What does my celebrating Christmas have to do with the topic? And you tell me why I get frustrated with my own brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus prays for a perfect unity, people like him make it hard for us to be perfectly united. Right? In a hadith, <clears throat> that my servant keeps getting closer and closer to me by extra or additional acts of worship and devotion Listen. until I love him. And when I love him, Allah says, I will be the eyes with which he sees, the ears with which he sees, the tongue with which he speaks, the hands with which he does things, the legs with which he walks. But no Muslim has ever interpreted that or understood it to mean that God become in me, that I become divine. But it means that I speak the word of truth as Allah ordains me. I see the truth clearly without confusion as Allah guided me. I hear the word of truth and it gets to my heart. I do things with my hand and my legs only in accordance with the will of Allah. It's not a very strange terminology. I and the Father are one. The spiritual communion, it doesn't mean divinity. Then we are told... Okay, notice how he explains what Jesus said. He said, there is a narration where Allah says, when my servant draws near to me, I'll be the eyes with which he sees, the hands with which he does things, and the feet with which he walks. So what does he explain? How does he explain it? He's explaining it that a person becomes so in tune and in union with Allah, that Allah empowers that servant to live a manner pleasing to him. You understand how he tried to explain what Jesus said? In explaining it, he just buried himself in his prophet and proved that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. As you guys are focusing, you know why? In order for Allah, and Allah is not the true God, by the way. Allah is not the true God. But let's just for argument's sake, go with that narration. In order for Allah to be the eyes and the hands and the feet of every believer, 
meaning that Allah will be with every believer who submits to him to empower that believer to walk in a manner pleasing to him. Allah has to be omnipresent, omnipotent, right? Allah has to be omnipresent, omnipotent, correct? For Allah to be the eyes and the hands and the feet, metaphorically speaking, meaning that all servants who truly love him, he will be with them to empower them to live a life pleasing to him. He must be omnipresent, omnipotent. He must be present with every one of them and have the power to enable every one of them to walk in a manner pleasing to Allah. Well, thank you, Jamal Bari, for proving Jesus is God. Because in his stupidity, he read it but didn't understand. Jesus says that he's in all the disciples. Jesus is in all the disciples in order to unify them together and uni unite them to God. How can Jesus be in every disciple simultaneously at the same time to unify them with one another and with the Father if Jesus isn't omnipresent, omnipotent? You stupid moron. Stone-kissing pagan. You see how it backfired? Now let me show you that from Jesus' own words. John 17, 20 to 23. Focus, Thomas, focus. John 17, 20 to 23. Watch. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. In other words, their unity comes as a result of their fellowship with us. They have to be in union with us, you and I, Father, for them to be united. Because their union with us is what will result in them being united to, the, to one another. That the world may, may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you have loved me. You see what he said? They'll be one in union with us. If they are submitted to us and I am in union with them, in them, and they are in union with me, then I will then empower them to become perfectly united in fellowship with one another, and I'll empower them to remain in union with you, Father, and me, I by being in them. So wait, Jamal Badawi, how can a mere creature indwell all believers simultaneously, resulting in the believers becoming perfectly united with one another and with God because of Jesus indwelling them, being in them, and they in him? So isn't it amazing? The very passage he quotes proves that Jesus is claiming to be God because he's saying, I'm omnipresent, omnipotent. You have to be in union with me and I have to be in union with you so that I can then unify you with one another and unify you to God and myself. I do it by being in you and I connect you to the Father because I'm in him and he's in me. Does that sound like Jesus is denying that he's God? Or does that sound like Jesus just claimed to be omnipresent and omnipotent? What about John 10, 30? When Jesus says, I am the Father one, is that at all the same as what Jesus says in John 17? Okay, now listen to me because you're going to learn. What did I say about these sessions? You're going to learn how to interpret the Bible, how not to interpret the Bible. Then you're going to see more irrefutable, convincing proofs from Scripture the God of the Bible is real, the Bible is supernatural, and the God of the Bible is triune, and Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, the one person who's the God-man who's alive. I said you're going to learn all this, and I wasn't lying. And at the same time, you're going to learn how to destroy this false satanic religion called Islam. Okay, when Jesus says in John 17, the disciples are one as the Father and the Son are one, is that the same type of unity Jesus was referring to in John 10? Yes and no. Yes and no. What do I mean? In John 10, yes, Jesus is saying that he and the Father are perfectly one, united, inseparable. But he's saying more than that. The context will define what kind of unity the writer or the speaker has in mind. You with me there? Uh, let me explain what I mean. It's the context that will define the precise meaning of that unity. When it says male and female become one flesh, they're no longer two. That unity is different 
from the unity that believers have with one another. You see? A husband and wife are one flesh, but they are one in a different sense that we are one with each other, and our unity is different from the way the Father, Son, and Spirit are one with one another. The context will define the exact precise meaning and implication of unity. Now, can you send Abraham back to the well at Sikhar? Because this moron, this idiot, keeps talking about Halal Hogan because he's too stupid to focus on the Word of God. So let me do a Halal Hogan move on you, you, you idiot. We're talking about the Trinity. He's talking about Halal Hogan. You stupid, dumb demon. Lord Jesus, have mercy on you. Everyone got that? You understand? So let's go to John 10 to see what kind of unity Jesus is referring to. As the Lord Jesus blesses this channel and brings droves for his glory to hear this information. Are you ready? What kind of unity is Jesus referring to in John 10? Is it the same as in John 17 or is it different? Let's let the context speak. Let's go to John 10, 30 and look at it. John 10, 30. We're going to start at John 10, 30. And it's primarily the fault of Christians for not exegeting passages. I and my father are one. There it is, John 10, 30. The problem is not Jamal Badawi. He's parroting the arguments of Joe's Witnesses and other anti-Trinitarians. The problem lay chiefly with Trinitarians who quote John 10, 30, thinking it's sufficient just to simply say that Jesus said, I am the Father one. The fault is with us, with you and me. Why do we quote John 10, 30 and think it's sufficient? Who told you it's sufficient? Victory Street Minister, I guess you were not here for yesterday's session. He brought that up and refuted it, and I had to address it. But anyway, focus with me. Are you with me there? Now, here's something you don't see in the English. You see that verb are, I and my father are one? Are, let me get you the link to the Greek. So we're going to unpack it. Okay. I've unpacked this over and over again, but we're creatures of repetition. We need to hear it over and over again. Here it is, John 10 30. I want you to see this for yourself. I want you to see this for yourself. Okay. Here you go. Click on it. You'll see that the verb in Greek is esmen. 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 You'll look at it. If you do me a favor, you got to click on the links. Go to the word esmen, R, not the word one, hen. Put your cursor, your mouse, whatever you want to call it, under the letters V-PIA-1P. When you do it, it comes up, it'll tell you it's a verb, present, indicative, active, first person, plural. It's a plural verb. You know what that literally means? I am my father, we are, showing they're not the same person. This destroys modalism. It shows Jesus isn't simply the Father in human manifestation or the human nature of the Father. He's not the person of the Father in a different mode in human appearance. He's distinct from the Father as a distinct person. We are. Together, we are one. So it destroys modalism. It's number one. Now, how do I know what kind of unity Jesus is referring to? Well, now let's unpack it. Are we ready? Are you ready? John 10, 27 to 28. Let's unpack it. John 10, 27 to 28. Let's unpack it. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone... Snatch them out of my hand. Note, note. I've already done this. I've done. This, I've. I've mentioned this passage so many times that I recite this when I'm sleeping. I even have dreams of it. That's how many times I've broken down this passage. But anyway, notice he says, "My sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand. My sheep. My voice. My hand. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish." Right? They, no one will pluck them out of my hand. So remember these things. My sheep, my voice, my hand, none can deliver out of my hand. I give them eternal life. Remember those five facts from what Jesus said. My sheep, my voice, 
my hand, I give them eternal life. None can deliver them out of my hand. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Yeah, I am back. You know why this is the 17th time you heard me? Because it's the same argument over and over again. Nothing new under the sun. Now see that I, even I am he, there is no God beside me. So Jehovah's going to prove that he alone is God. Because he's the only God that can do the following. He's the only God that kills and makes alive. He's the only one that makes alive. He's the only God who wounds and heals. And there, there is none who can deliver from my hand. No one can deliver out of my hand and I make alive. Because I alone am God. Jesus says, I give them everlasting life and no one can deliver them out of my hand. What? Isaiah 43, 13. Isaiah 43, 13. If you did not notice, Yusuf, you got to be watching my YouTube sessions. I've been doing this for two years. All of this in my sessions and articles. Start watching the very earliest ones. Isaiah 43, 13. Uh, that's good, Yusuf. I'm going to use you as an example to prove that Jesus claimed to be God. Okay, Yusuf, get ready, my friend. Hopefully you'll be my, my brother in Jesus. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reverse it. Did you catch it? There is no one who can deliver on my hand. Jesus says, my sheep in my hand, none can deliver them out of my hand. And I give them everlasting life. <whistles> my sheep, my hand. Truth seeker, can you call me on Skype? Because I'm going to prove to you they didn't worship Allah, Muhammad, Satan, and Father. They worship Jesus. Can you call me on Skype if you're man enough to do so? Because I'll prove from the Old Testament, Allah of the Quran is Satan, the father of Muhammad. And you should spit on him and worship the God revealed in Jesus. But we know you're not man enough to do so. You're less man than Aisha because you won't call me. Okay, now for the rest of you guys, you see what Jesus said? My sheep in my hand, I give them everlasting life. They hear my voice, none can deliver my hand. What did Jehovah say? From eternity, I am he. None can deliver out of my hand. I, even I myself, am he. There is no God beside me. I kill, I make alive. I wound, I heal, and none can deliver on my hand. Do you see how Jesus' language sounds identical to what Jehovah says about himself? Now notice this part. Jesus says, my sheep in my hand hear my voice. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Focus, guys. Don't let the demons distract you. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Guys, focus. If I, don't let the demons distract you. Focus in Jesus' name. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harm your hearts. Okay, I'm confused, guys. Old Testament says, believers are the sheep of Jehovah's hand. They are to hear his voice. None can deliver out of Jehovah's hand. And Jehovah makes alive. Jehovah makes alive. I'm buffering. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, Allah. Damn, Shiva. Okay, I'm confused, guys. I'm confused. Pray for the connection. Yeah, Adam Shiva, Father, Son, Spirit. The Old Testament says the sheep are in Jehovah's hand. They are to hear Jehovah's voice. Jehovah makes alive and none can deliver out of Jehovah's hand. Jesus says, my sheep in my hand hear my voice. I give them everlasting life. No one can deliver them out of my hand. Who does Jesus think he is? Now let's read John 10, 29 to 30. John 10, 29 to 30. Please, Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, please, my God. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know why. It's not here. Okay, watch here. John 10, 29 to 30. Watch here. My Father has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. There's the context. No one can deliver out of my hand. No one can deliver them out of my father's hand. Why? Because my father and I are one. One in what? One in our ability to preserve all believers forever incorruptible. 
One in our ability to make sure the believers are never destroyed and that no one misleads them and takes them out of our hand. Right? Everyone got that? Did everyone get it before I move on? Let me ask you another question. I am back. Then you're not paying attention to anything I said, which really disarms me. What kind of qualities must Jesus possess? Yeah, I'm a sheikh of father, son of spirit. He's my dad. We were staying in a long on a moonlight day. Sorry about that. I took you for a ride because my connection's bad. What kind of qualities must Jesus possess to be able to give all true believers moral incorruptibility, transform them that they will never sin again, thereby never bringing judgment upon themselves and making them physically indestructible? And what kind of attributes will Jesus have to guarantee that no power will be able to destroy them and stop Jesus from preserving them forever? What kind of attributes is Jesus claiming to have to say that he does this in union with the Father? He must be all-powerful, more powerful than any creature who would try to prevent Jesus from preserving believers. And he must be all-knowing because he must know who the believers are and he must be present with them to preserve them. And this context is similar to John 17. Jasmine, you need to get out of here, dude. Get this guy out of here. You make stupid look smart. Get Jasmine out of here. Right? Everyone got it? Does that sound anything like John 17? Or is John 10 a context that's unique in what Jesus says? And now the Jews who knew the Hebrew Bible, the Jews who knew the Old Testament, their reaction, John 10, 31 to 33. John 10, 31 to 33. Yeah, guys, I don't want idiots. I don't want blasphemers. I don't want distractions. I want people who really want to learn, and I want a lot of those kind of people to learn. Okay. G you didn't put 31. Remember, Protestant, you're going to have problems because for some reason, YouTube blocks your code of John 10, 31. Let's not go through this again. Because we went through it before. You're going to have to change the wording. No, Protestant. It doesn't show up. Because there's something there that YouTube does not allow you to post. Change the wording. Do something. John 10, 31. At this, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. That's it. Yeah, who are you? Who are you? Oh, hi. Um, I was just wanted to uh, just quickly mention stuff about John 10. That's what you get. Your mother should be thrown in jail for raising up someone so stupid. Okay, now, everyone got it? John 10, 31. It didn't show up again, brother. It didn't show up again. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I've shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Now, notice their reaction. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we do not stone you. But for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. You see? They knew the Old Testament. They knew this is a man standing before them. This is a man standing before them. Okay? But this man claims to be God. Because he says things that only God can say. So they're right. He's a man. And they're right. He claims to be God. But they're wrong into thinking that he is blaspheming. Because he's truly God who became man. And yet he's not the father, but one with the father. You caught it? So now did that sufficiently refute Jamal Badawi's point? So we can go to these other points. Did you get a sufficient refutation to this deceiver? No, I am back. I can't. I won't. Go listen to my sessions, read my articles, because I don't want to block you too, brother. Don't be lazy. Go find your answer. Don't upset me because you're lazy and you don't want to find the answer. If it was for a job, you'd be running to find the answer. So moving on. Andre, Andre, Riba. Yeah! All right. Are we ready now to go to the next point? 
Is Yusuf here? Because I want to use Yusuf to prove Jesus claimed to be God by appealing to Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. Yusuf, are you still here? Okay, Yusuf, I need to ask you a question. Do you want to call me on Skype and I can ask you questions or do you want to answer in the text? Because he said he's a Muslim, which is ironic because he says Yohanna. You're a Muslim, right? Okay, you're a Muslim, right? Okay, guys, he's going to help me refute Jamal Badawi. Pay attention, guys. Let me engage this man. He's a godsend. And pray the Lord Jesus will open his heart to get saved. Guys, pay attention. Okay. You subscribe to Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, right? That the names of Allah and the characteristics of Allah cannot be given to a creature. Al-Asma wa Sifat. Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, right? You subscribe to that. The names and attributes of Allah cannot be given to a creature, right? Right? Yeah, I don't know why it's buffering here. Please, my God. Right? Just want to make sure. Let's see. Is he responding or no? This year, Yusuf, before the time of Hajj, before it's time for you to kiss the black stone. Anybody? Hello? Hello, my friend. Hello. All right. Okay. All right, now Yusuf, what are the names of Allah? Al-Awwal wal-Akhir. Al-Awwal wal-Akhir. The first and last, right? Okay, good. Hold on, let me get this for you. Let me get it for you. Let me get the, the Aisha Buley file. Aisha Buley. Aisha Buley, hold on. Let me get it for you, hold on. Let me do this. Hold on, guys. Let me get it for you again. All right. Here it is. Okay, guys, do me a favor. There you go, right there. There's the link. Let me post it twice. Guys, if you do a control F or a command F, if you have Mac, do a command F. Do first. And it'll take you to the section that says Al Awal Al Akhir, the first and the last. These are some of the names of Allah. Okay. Command F or Control F and put the word first. It will then take you right to the section in our article where it says that one of the names of Allah is Al Awal Al Akhir, the first and the last. You guys see that? Are you guys doing it? Don't help me, guys. Don't be posting verses and help me. Stop for Allah Rabbil All right. You guys see that? I am back. I'm going to send you back somewhere if you keep trying to help me and not be patient. Let me deal with this young man. Why are you being a distraction today? Why do you feel the need to post verses to try and impress us that you know the subject when you're only frustrating me because I'm trying to get Yusuf to see it and you're raining on our parade? Why are you doing this, brother? Okay. Now for Yusuf. Yusuf. One of the names of Allah in chapter 57 verse 3 of the Quran. Brother, if you can post it. 57 verse 3. Watch here in the Quran. You're about to get blocked. I'm back. You're making two mistakes. I'm waiting for a third one because I'm going to send you out of here. All right? Do it for me. So you know that I'm an equal opportunist. I don't tickle ears. Don't try to impress me with your knowledge. Impress the Lord Jesus and teach it to others. Okay? 57 verse 3, chapter 57 verse 3. Are you there, Protestant, before the rapture? Or did Joe Biden leave you behind? Yusuf, Yusuf, you see here the Quran, Surah Al-Hadid. He is the first and the last, the seen and the hidden, and he knows all things. Yusuf, do you see? Now, lawful, I hope you're not talking about me, disappointing, because you know what I'm going to do to you too, right? I don't know if you don't realize, I don't give a damn about your opinion. Anyway, now for you, Yusuf, do you agree only Allah is the first and the last, right? Only Allah is the first and the last, right? Do you agree? Only Allah, Allah alone is the first and the last. You can't say this of a creature. Al-awwal wal-akhir. 
These are the names of Allah, and only Allah can be the first and last. Yusuf, this year. Do you agree? Lyndon, I didn't know your name was uh, Yusuf. I'm sorry. Did you change your name? Yusuf, my brother in humanity. I don't know. He's not answering. I'm probably wasting my time with him. If he is, then I'm going to ignore him. Is he here? Is he still there, guys? Someone help me? Why can't you breathe, Patrick? Okay, yes. So finally, Yusuf, be a little faster, not slower, faster. Pretend you're on Hajj and you're running around the Kaaba seven times. Or you're running between Safa and Marwa seven times. Speed up. Come on, speed up. Pretend you're on Hajj. Okay, he said yes. Revelation 117. Revelation 117. I'm going to read this and I want to ask, your, ask for your answer. Revelation 117. Okay. Revelation 117. I know I got it, Prophet Google. Prophet Khalil Lubuk, don't let me block you too. I got it, dude. Revelation 117. Prophet, say it again that he said yes, Qashadun Khupati, Michigan. All right. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and last. Now, Yusuf, you agree with me? This is Allah Almighty speaking, right? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So you see, this is Allah, because only Allah is the first and the last, right? Allah is the first and the last, Yusuf? This is Allah speaking? Before Hajj and Umrah, before you run between Safa and Marwa and kiss the black stone. Okay. Yusuf, this is Allah speaking, right? According to Islam and the Quran, is Allah speaking? Topaz, I heard what he said. This is Allah speaking, right? According to the Quran. You got 10 seconds, Yusuf, and I'm going to send you to Mecca. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you this question before I block you. Are you saying Jesus claimed to be Allah because only Allah is the first and last? Because that's what you just said. So I'm going to tell you again. Only Allah is the first and last, right? So are you now admitting Jesus claimed to be Allah? Your answer is going to determine whether you stay. Because you just said only Allah is the first and last. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three. Okay, you're honest. You saved yourself. He saved himself. He goes, if I'm going to be honest, yeah. Yes, Yusuf. That's all we want is you to be honest. He just admit Jesus claimed to be Allah. He goes, if I'm going to be honest, yes. Jesus claimed to be Allah. We are the champions, my friend. Okay, Yusuf, are you ready for another point? Are you ready for another point? If you're honest, you're going to stay. You lie to me, I send you to Mecca Wish Foundation. Yusuf, in that article, in that article, the names of Allah, one of the names of Allah is that he's An-Nur. Okay? Guys, do a control F or a command F, put in the words and you are. And you are, and you're going to see it says Ennur. Go to that file by Aisha Buley. It's, it's, you can do Control F or Command F. If it's a Mac, it's Command F. Type in N U R, Ennur, and it will take you to the section. It says Ennur, the light. The light. You see it? I can't do it for you because I can't post it. Ennur. Now let's look at chapter 24, verse 35. Chapter 24, verse 35. Guys, notice I'm going to use Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat to prove Jesus claimed to be God. Are you learning, Christians? You're learning how to interpret the Bible, how not to interpret the Bible. You're learning how Jesus in the Bible claims to be God Almighty in the flesh, this thing from the Father and the Spirit, and one with them in essence. And you're learning how to use Islamic theology to prove it, to destroy Islam. You see, you're learning this. I'm teaching you actual arguments to use 
and your witness to Muslims. 2435, Yusuf. 2435 of the Quran. See, Yusuf just said, I am shocked from the info. Good, Yusuf. Keep coming. If you're honest and you don't lie and you don't mock and blaspheme and play games, you can stay. The moment you play games, I get you out of here. Okay, 2435, Yusuf, in the Quran. And Nur, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. His light is like a niche in which is a lamp. The lamp is encased in glass vessel, non-Arabic. Oh, this guy, and you and your uh, Osama Dagdok. The glass vessel, as it were, glistening planet. It is lightened from a blessed Zaytuna. Free neither of the east nor of the west. Right? Tree. A Zaytuna tree. Right? Can you do me a favor, Pat Protestant? Can I pay you? I'll send you a check for Christmas. Can you use a translation that doesn't insert words in brackets to make it longer? I know you like Usama Dagdok, and you have a picture of Usama, and you burn incense to him. Can you use something else? 2435 or no? 2435? Here, let me see if I can get it. It's quoted here. 2435. Here you go. All right, here you go. Let me get it. Okay. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The metaphor of his light is that of a niche, which there is a lamp, right? And then the following. Okay, hold on. Let me get this. Which is a lamp. Okay, here you go. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The similitude, the metaphor of his light is as a niche wherein is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. The glass, as it were, a shining star. This lamp is kindled from a blessed tree, an olive neither of the east nor of the west, whose oil would almost glow forth of itself, though no fire touched it. Light upon light, Allah guides unto his light, which whom he will, and Allah speaketh to mankind in allegories, for Allah is knower of all things. Now, Yusuf, are you listening, Yusuf? Yusuf, are you listening? According to 20, Surah 2435, according to Surah 2435, Allah is the light and nur of the heavens and the earth. You see light from his light, and he knows all things. Do you agree, Yusuf? No creature can be called the light of the heavens and the earth. No creature can be the light of the world because Anur is one of the names of Allah. Do you agree? He said 100%. Can a creature say he is Anur, the light of the earth, the light of the heavens and the earth? Can a creature say that if he fears Allah? Come on, Yusuf, help me out. Ahmed, call me in if you're brave, if you're more man than Aisha, and we'll discuss Tawheed and Jesus. Yusuf, do you agree? Be honest. Do you agree? According to Quran, Islamic theology, Tawhid al asma wa sifat, only Allah can be an nur, the light of the heaven and the earth. Right? Only Allah. You agree? I need to hear it from your own mouth. Do you agree? No, Pedro. Just be patient. He was saying no to a creature saying that. Only Allah, right? Okay, you hear it? He said, only Allah, guys. He said, only Allah. Lord Jesus rebuked distractions of Satan. In Jesus' name, ya Allah. Only Allah. John 8, 12, Yusuf. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. Lindsay, don't go into side talks, please. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will, will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Yusuf, do you agree that Jesus just claimed to be Allah by claiming to be An-Nur, An-Nur Al-Alameen, the light of the world? Do you agree? Jesus just claimed to be Allah by claiming the names of Allah. Do you agree, Yusuf?
Do you agree? Even though you don't believe in the Bible, do you agree? See, notice his reaction, guys. He said, wow. Yusuf Yohanna Al-Wasim. Now, I think he's a Muslim because I, this is the first time I'm saying Muslim with the name of Yohanna. Maybe he's lying to me. But he just said, wow. So he just agreed. Again, Jesus claimed to be Allah. You, I got some more for you, Yusuf. I got some more for you, Yusuf. Are you ready? You're okay? With me showing you that our Bible, Jesus claims to be God Almighty according to Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat. Are you ready for some more? Okay, now let me find you some more titles. Hold on. My connection is bad. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm Shiha. Okay, guys, I want you to do Command F or Control F and type in the words Muhyi, Muhyi, and Muhyi, M U H. I always have our time. I always have our time with the the sound. And Muhyi. Okay, just type in M U H Y I. Who's trolling? Who's trolling? Ryan Joseph, how do you know he's trolling? Who are you talking about? What did he say, Protestant? I don't know what he said. What did he say? So if he said, I'll, I won't waste my time anymore. I'll just block him. Okay. Ryan Joseph, you're confusing me. Why are you saying he's trolling, Ryan Joseph, when here he just told people, I won't say any longer that where did Jesus say I am God worship me? How's he trolling? Ryan Joseph, how's that trolling? And why are you distracting me, brother? He's telling you he won't ask Christians to show them where Jesus said that. How is that trolling, Ryan Joseph? Why are you misinterpreting his words and then distracting me? Why are you doing that, brother? How is he trolling when he's telling you, as a Muslim, I'll no longer ask where Jesus said, I am God. How's that trolling? Have mercy on us, my God. This is why, you see, I'm very tight. I run a tight ship. I'm very strict. I'm like a taskmaster. Because I got to control the flow of the conversation and bring order. Because too many chiefs, not enough Indians. You just falsely accuse this man of trolling when he's telling you, as a Muslim, I'll never say to show me where Jesus claimed to be God. And that's victory for us. That means he's one step closer to the truth, and you almost got me to block him. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us for your glory. Okay. Now, for the rest of you who don't want to be a distraction, okay? Mohye. Guys, do a command F. Command F or Control F, go to that file again. Muhyi. Yusuf, I want you to go see there. Muhyi, let me show you what it says. El Muhyi, El Mu'mit, the one who gives life, the one who makes die. The one who makes die. The one who gives life, the one who makes die. So according to the Quran, Allah makes alive and Allah causes you to die, right? You see that, Yusuf? Everyone see that? Allah makes alive and Allah makes die. Causes someone to die. He's al-muhyi and mu'mit The one who makes alive, the one who causes death. Do you see that, Yusuf? He's a life giver, right? And if you go there to this file, go there, another name I want you to see. I want you to see another name. Al-Haq. Al-Haq. Command F, Command F or Control F, and you'll see at the top, El Haq, the truly real, the truth. So now, Yusuf, I want you to focus on me, and I want to focus on you. I don't want anyone else to distract me. I'm focused on you. Guys, we have someone who's at the door. Don't let Satan use you to distract. Pray for this conversation. Pray for him. Okay? Do you agree with the Quran and Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat? Only Allah is the life giver, Al-Muhyi. Only Allah is Al-Haq, the truth. Only Allah is Al-Mu'mit, the one who causes to die. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do 
Do you agree? He said, Amin. No creature who fears Allah, who has taqwa, no creature can say, I am the truth. I am the life, the life giver, and I cause to die, right? No creature, right? You agree? No creature, if it fears Allah, will say that. Do you agree, Yusuf? Let him speak, guys. Don't speak for him. Why are you speaking for him? Let him speak. Can you be patient, brethren, and control yourself? Only God, of course. Okay. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. You said only God, right? Okay. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Watch here what Jesus says. Jesus speaking, Yusuf. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, el haq and the life, el muhyi No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus just said he's el haq an al haq an al muhyi The one who makes alive, who gives life, who is life, and who is the truth. Do you admit again, Jesus just claimed to be Allah in the flesh? Do you admit Jesus is claiming the very attributes that belong to God alone, and Jesus is claiming to be Allah in the flesh. Do you agree? Let him answer, guys. I know you're excited. Let him answer. You guys are saved. Let him focus. Pray for him. If you love him, pray for him. And help me to help him. Do you admit Jesus claimed to be the truth, al-haq and al-muhyi, the life giver, the life? Meaning he claimed to be Allah because you said only God can say this. Do you agree? I just want him to respond. I'm more concerned with him right now. The Lord brought this blessing so he can preach the truth to him. See, he just said it, guys. Notice what he said. For real, according to John, I see it, yes. He's admitting it. He's admitting it. So don't be a distraction to him or me. Pray for him and be patient. The Lord brought us this man so he can hear the truth. Okay. I'm going to show you two verses in the Quran, Yusuf. Two verses in the Quran, Yusuf. Okay? Chapter 22, verse 6 and 7. Chapter 22, verse 6 to 7. Okay? Chapter 22, verse 6 to 7. I know you guys are excited. Control yourselves. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may give us perfect control. Try to chime in less so he can focus. Read, Yusuf. That is because Allah, he is the truth, Yusuf. This is your Quran, Surah Al-Hajj. And because he quickeneth the dead. Allah is the truth who gives life to the dead. He, Allah, quickeneth the dead. Pay attention, Yusuf. And because he is able to do all things. Now notice verse 7. And because the hour will come, there is no doubt thereof. And because Allah will raise those who are in the graves. Did you catch it, Yusuf? Your Quran says, Allah is the truth, al haq He gives life to the dead. He quickeneth the dead. And when the hour comes, Allah will raise them out of their graves. Do you agree, Yusuf? Only Allah raises the dead from their graves at the hour, Yom al Qiyamah. And do you agree with the Quran? Only Allah is the truth who gives life to the dead. Do you agree? Muhi, Mu'mit, Al Haq, you agree? And at the hour, at the hour, the last day, Allah is the one who's going to raise people from their graves. Do you agree? Yusuf, I need your feedback. Do you agree? I need to hear from him. Yes. Good. Okay. Now, Yusuf, help me understand this. John 5, 21 and 25. Jesus speaking. He's not the father. Notice what he says. John 5, verse 21 and verse 25. John 5, 21 and 25. Guys, no distraction. Even you, Protestant believer. What's the point of asking where did it come from? Even Protestants got issues. Him and Joe Biden. John 5, 21 and 25. John 5, 21 and 25. Read. Okay. Yusuf, Jesus speaking. 
For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Yusuf, Jesus says, I am the Son who, like the Father, gives life to the dead. And the hour is coming where the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and will live. Now, John 5, 25 and verses 28, 29. John 5, 25 and verses 28, 29. Yusuf, pay attention. Don't distract them, guys. John 5, 25 and verses 28, 29. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. The hour is coming, Yusuf. The dead will hear the voice of God at the hour, and those who hear will live. Notice what Jesus says in 28, 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs in the graves will hear his voice. Whose voice? 25 tells you, the voice of the Son of God, and come out. Now, Yusuf, Jesus said, at that hour, they will hear the, my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and come out of the graves. They will come out of the graves at that hour when I, the Son of God, by my voice, summon them and give them life to come out. You just read in the Quran, Yusuf. Allah is the one who at that hour will raise the dead from their graves and give life to them. Do you admit, Yusuf, that Jesus here is claiming to be Allah Almighty, Doing what the Quran says only Allah does at that hour. Do you admit this? And even though Jesus is the Son, He's not the Father. I'm not saying do you accept it. Do you admit Jesus just claimed what the Quran says only Allah Almighty does? Do you admit? No, Yusuf, they don't. There's nowhere in your Quran that says at the hour the angels will raise them from the grave. Ya mushrik, you mushrik, you kafir. Where does it say the angel of death will give life to the dead at the hour and bring them out of their graves? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Ya mushrik, you're now a kafir, munafik. Did you not read 22 verse 7? One more time, Yusuf, put 22 verse 7 of the Quran. One more time. I don't care what you heard. Read the ayah again. The ayah, Surah Al-Hajj, 22 verse 7. The, the ayah. Okay. And that the hour is coming. No doubt about it. And that Allah will raise them up who are in the tombs. Did you see it, Yusuf? Your Quran says the hour comes. Allah will raise them from the tombs. Are you saying that you disagree with the Quran? The Quran is a lie? Uh, Pradeng, did we ask your opinion? So you, hold on, Pradeng. So if he's too young, Jesus doesn't care for him? Because he's too young, Jesus doesn't want to save him. What a stupid remark to come from you. So what? He's too young. And? Okay, so do you agree, Yusuf? Do you agree, Yusuf? That only Allah, according to Quran, at the hour, raises the dead from their graves? Do you agree? Do you agree? According to the Quran, no one else, not even the angel of death, does it? Yom al -Qiyama? Do you agree? I just want to wait for his response. Okay, a divine notice, yep, it is only a divine thing. But did you remember what Jesus said? John 5, 25, 28, 29. Jesus said, The hour is coming where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and come out of their tombs. Do you admit now that Jesus just claimed to be Allah Almighty in the flesh, who's not the Father but the Son, because it's Him at the hour, at the last day, Yom Al-Qiyamah, that will raise the dead from their tombs by His voice? Do you admit at least that's what Jesus just claimed to be? Do you admit this? Are you honest enough to admit what you're seeing from the Gospel of John? Do you admit this, brother, and humanity, and I pray you'll be my brother in Jesus soon? 
Do you admit this? That Jesus claimed to do what only Allah does at the last hour. Therefore, he's claiming to be God. He said yes, you see? You guys see what I'm teaching you how to witness the Muslims effectively. You use Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat to show that according to the Quran and this branch of Tawheed, Jesus in our Gospels claimed to be God Almighty in the flesh, even though he's not the Father, not the Spirit, which is why we're Trinitarians. If you learn this way of arguing, you will decimate Muslim liars and apologists like Shabir Ali and Jamal Badawi. You will embarrass them because according to their Quran and their theology, only God can claim these things. And yet Jesus and the Gospels claim to do what only God does. So what they're going to tell you is, well, your Gospels are corrupt. They're not reliable. Jesus didn't say that. But when they say that, they admit, yes, the Gospels have Jesus claiming to be God Almighty in the flesh, who's not the Father, not the Spirit, but one with them. Yes, but we don't believe Jesus said it. Are you seeing it now? Okay, now, Yusuf, I'm going to give you a couple more passages. John 6, 39 of 40, and, well, let's go to John 6, 39 of 40. And then my time is up. I hope you still were blessed. This is the second part in a series of refuting Muslim debaters like Jamal Badawi. So thank you, Jamal Badawi, for being stupid enough to be used of the devil so that the Lord Jesus can take the evil that your father intended through you and use it for his glory to destroy your religion, your false God, your false prophet, and magnify the triune God of the Bible who lives. Glory to the Father and the Son, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to get to that, Yusuf. Right now, what I want you to focus on, Yusuf, is what Jesus said in the Gospel of John. Next session, when I'm here, I'll show you why you trust the Gospel of John because it's written by an eyewitness a Sahabi of Jesus, one of the Hawariyun, by Wahi, inspiration of God, and it's historically reliable. But right now, what I want you to focus on, Yusuf, is I want you to see, yes, these Gospels, Jesus claims to be Allah Almighty in the flesh, the Son of the Father, companion of the Spirit, and then I'll show you why you believe in the next session, all right? But now, Yusuf, Yusuf, read with me, Jesus again speaking. John 6, 39 to 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. See what Jesus said? I will raise up the mu'minun, the mu'minin, the believers. I, Jesus, will raise up the believers on the last day. Now notice John 6, 40, Yusuf. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him, should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, Yusuf, I want to ask you a question. According to the Quran and the Sunnah, who raises the dead to life on the last day? On Yom al Qiyamah, who raises the dead to life, both the wicked and the righteous, to stand in judgment? Who does that according to the Quran and Sunnah? Who's the Taqiyya team? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Who does that? Yusuf. God, who is the Almighty? Okay. Did you read John 6, 9, 40? That was Jesus saying, I, the Son, will raise up at the last day all that the Father gives me. So he's not the Father. He's the Son of the Father. But he will raise all of them up at the last day. Do you admit that in the Gospel of John, Jesus just claimed to do what only Almighty Allah does? So Jesus is claiming to be God Almighty in the flesh, that he's God and man. Do you admit that's what Jesus says in the Gospel of John? Reuben, why are you interjecting? Do you admit? I just want a minute, so then we got to wrap it up. Hold on. I just want him to say it and I got to wrap up. Jesus said, he will raise up the believers at the last day. He said, yes, guys, he admits that Jesus in the Gospel of John claims what only God Almighty claims. 
so that Jesus did claim to be God Almighty in the flesh, the Son of the Father, the companion spirit who's one with them in essence, so that he admits Jesus is God who is man, according to John, according to Jesus' own words. But now he wants to know why he should trust John. Lord willing, if you're here next time, I will show you. To make it easier, call me on Skype because you're going to need to open up your Quran because I'm going to show you from the Quran that you're supposed to believe in the Gospel of John. Written by a Sahabi, a companion of Jesus, by Wahi from God. It's historically accurate. Well, contact me on Skype, Yusuf. Yusuf, go to Skype. Contact me and say, hey, it's me, Yusuf. We'll set up a time where we'll go through this. So, guys, you see, we almost lost this guy because Satan wanted us to get rid of him and block him because we thought he was a troll. You see, Satan was going to use us Christians to get rid of him. This is why, my brothers and sisters, I love you. I don't want to be tough with you, but I got to be tough because I have to rein you in and be a tight and tough taskmaster to bring control in order to save save us from distraction and chaos because we almost lost this guy because we thought he was a troll. And that's what Satan wanted. Satan wanted us to get rid of him because he didn't want him to hear the truth. So bear with me. Bear with me in hey, being tough with bear you. Bear with me. Sorry. In being harsh with you, it's because I need to rein us in to maintain order because God is a God of order, not chaos, and I do it out of love for you. Honestly, trust me. Learn these arguments. Be patient. Stop being chiefs. Be Indians and pray for me and pray with me and work with me, not against me. Not against me. Okay? Let's trust the Holy Spirit that he's going to take over and I'm the one speaking, meaning I'm the one who's doing it right now, right? Please, my God. I don't know why the connection is bad. It's getting me angry. All right, anyway, so bear with me. Be patient with me. Notice what Yusuf said, guys. Record it. Guys, you want confirmation of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is blessing these sessions and anointing us. Someone like me who's not worthy, who deserves hell. Look what he just said. Copy and paste it. Yusuf, Yohanna, Wal Al Wasim. Shamunian, something about your teaching is amazing. This comes from a Muslim, brethren. The Holy Spirit opened his mouth to bear witness to me and to you. Shamunian, something about your teaching is amazing. You know why, you, Yusuf? Because I serve an amazing God. I serve and I worship and I love the true God who's infinitely amazing and mind-blowing, who takes human creatures, sinful creatures like me, and does wonders through them so you can bear witness the God whom I worship, the God of the Bible, the Christian God, Father, Holy Spirit, is infinitely amazing. Not Allah, not Muhammad. Thank you for bearing witness. So, guys, pray for me. Here it goes. Save that testimony. Pray for Yusuf. Pray he'll come back. You have my Skype number. Call me. We'll set up a time so I can show you why you need to believe in the Gospel of John. Pray for this YouTube channel. Pray for the subscribers, more subscribers, more viewers who will listen and learn and not challenge me and distract me and others. Pray God keeps us holy, pure, righteous, in love with Jesus, obeying Jesus, being doers of his word. Pray the Lord gives me the health I need to serve him. Pray God will do a miracle, bring my daughters to me, save them from irreparable damage, keep them healthier than me and provide for them abundantly for the glory of Jesus and that the Lord will sustain me to do ministry for his glory. Tonight, I'm back with William Albrecht. Not on my channel, but tonight. Tonight, if you guys don't sleep. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Tonight. 1 a.m. Lord Jesus willing. On William Albrecht's YouTube channel. That's the name of the channel. William Albrecht. Part 3 of a refutation to Shibir Ali on Paul's view of Jesus. Part 3. Come there tonight. 1 a.m. New York time. Eastern Standard Time. Michigan time. So I got a long night tonight, a busy night. Glory to the triumph God. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son, the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Jesus is risen. He's alive. He lives forever. And if we are in love with him, we will live forever. And the Bible is his word. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha comes sooner than later. And pray for Yusuf to come back. Pray that Yusuf 
will come back. I don't know what Ryan Joseph and Master P are thinking. I hope you guys still don't think he is a troll. I hope you still don't think he's a troll. Because even if he's a troll, that troll was used of God to bless you guys. Because you learn now one of the most effective ways of convincing Muslims that Jesus claimed to be God. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Preserve us for your glory and save us from our calamities and bring my daughters to me. Guys, pray for my miracle. This will be the third Christmas without my daughters. Pray Jesus saves them from this godless union between their mother and her adulterous fiance. Christ is risen, risen indeed. See you tonight. Love you guys. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come Lord Jesus.